Hi there, it's Anna McKinley here and welcome to my channel. Now, a couple of days ago, I talked with, um, about in my post about how now could possibly be the best time in human history to start your own business for the go-getter, for the person who is that way inclined. And as I actually mentioned in that post, what we're really talking about there is the person with the right mindset, the right set of beliefs, thinking, mental models, whatever label you want to use for that. And so over the next few days, I'm going to share with you some really powerful concepts, ideas, approaches, and of course, practical tools to help you to have the best possible mindset to achieve what you want to achieve, whether it is about starting your own business or other things you want to accomplish in life. Because actually, everything we experience in life and everything we're able to accomplish in life ultimately is determined by the way we think, by our belie beliefs, what we believe about ourselves and the world. So I'm really excited to be sharing with you some insights on not just the role of our mindset um, and also the kind of mindset that underpins success, but also some things that you can do to change your thinking and thereby change your life. Sound like fun? All right. And in fact, I'd actually like to start with something that affects all of us, one way or another, all the time. And I'm going to share with you a personal story. This is something that happened in my life really recently. I found myself on the edges of a conversation with a couple of people that I'm close to. And as with so many conversations <laughs> in today's world, you know, started with talking about the latest news about the coronavirus and went on to talking about how it was being handled in different places and the things that various people and positions of influence should have done differently. Um, and, you know, those conversations then deteriorate into a discussion of um, idiots and then global politics and the way that things are going in the world and various decisions by different governments or influential people around the world that these people didn't like. And it got into a bit of a spin. I'm sure you've been involved in conversations like that in your life as well. Now, I'm going to be really open over the past um, number of years, I've learned to become extremely careful about my mind and what I let into it, what I expose my mind to. I'm what I think of as an intentional optimist. I actively cultivate a positive mindset and intentionally feed my mind things that I know will boost my mind, my thinking, and my emotional state because I know the impact that this has. I know how these things flow through into my business success, my health, my relationships, my happiness, and the entire quality of my life, but also into how I show up for others, like yourselves. And that is really important to me. And yet here I found myself listening into this conversation. So I'm there on the edges of it and attempting to shift the balance a bit away from the negativity by chiming in with some alternative perspectives and you know, looking at, at positives, what are good things that people are taking, where are the opportunities, etc. And of course, getting the, the often um, rehearsed yes, but responses. So when the conversation ended, I'll be really open. I felt noticeably low. My happiness gauge had dropped right down. And it affected me, my thinking and my actions for a good hour or so before I got my thinking refocused. Now, that's, that's a massive win in a lot of ways. In the past, it would have taken me a day or longer to recalibrate myself. Um, but even so, it was not good. Why, why does this matter? Why do I focus on this? Well, firstly, these kinds of conversations go on a lot, whether on social media or in our day-to-day -day lives, right? Why does it matter? Well, how we feel determines how we show up. So, uh, if we are around conversations or people that bring us down, that empty our batteries, that lower our emotional state um, or affect a way of thinking, it directly affects how we show up, how we come across to others, how much action we take versus how much we procrastinate, and also how effective that action is. If I'd come away from that conversation 
feeling low, unenergized, unmotivated, a bit negative, and then had to go, for example, into a conversation with a potential client, well, just how inspiring would I have been for that person? How motivated would they have been to go, yes, I'm going to work with you, Anna, right? <laughs> it wouldn't have been good. And this kind of thing goes for all of us. So it's important. And this experience reminded me of a super important principle, which is what I want to share with you now, because it comes directly to, you know, what if you are in business looking forward to the new normal that we're faced in? Or what if you're thinking about making that transition? Or what if you simply want to actually create a good life for yourself and your family in our current environment? Whatever it is, this is important for you. And it's about the importance of who we spend time with and the importance of being intentional about that. And yes, even a bit selective about it. I'm going to take you back to 1937. What's significant about that date? Well, that is the date in which Napoleon Hill published his book, Think and Grow Rich, which has been very influential over the years. You may even have heard of it or even read it yourself. Now, Think and Grow Rich was a book that um, was based on Napoleon Hill's studies and research into a number of the most successful business men of the time. And he included a number of insights into what it was that they thought as well as did that helped them be so successful. And in that book, he shared that we take on the nature and the habits and the power of thought of those with whom we associate. I'm going to repeat that. We take on the nature and the habits and the power of thought of those with whom we associate. And he talked about that in talking about what he calls his mastermind principle. Now, that concept has been taken and built on and applied over the years by a number of people. Jim Rohn, for example, is famously attributed with saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You've probably heard that one. In other words, the people we hang out with the most impact who we become, how we show up in the world, what we accomplish, and what we don't. And this plays out in our businesses, in our career, and in all areas of our life. In our health, our happiness, our wealth, everything is affected by the people we associate with. But here's the thing. It actually goes much more widely than the five people we associate most with. David Berkus, in a blog post on mission.org, um, pulled together some research on the impact of social networks. And in his blog, he reports that actually it goes much, much, much wider than just the five people we associate with the most. We are affected by our friends and by their friends, and in fact, by their friends' friends. And this is based on actual research. If the friend of a friend of your friend gains weight or becomes obese, that actually increases the likelihood that you will gain weight. If they start smoking, it increases the chances that you will start smoking. If the friend of a friend of a friend is actually really happy and satisfied with their life, it increases your chances of happiness. Right? That's fascinating, isn't it? But also, <laughs> doesn't that really emphasize the importance of thinking about who we hang out with? I mean, for me, I believe this is a really big deal, right? Because, and I'm going to share with you in another episode, being happy is actually a super important foundation or precursor to being successful, whatever success means to you. So what does this mean for us in practice? What do we do about it? The bottom line is it's super important to pay attention to who you're spending time with and energy with, who you're connecting with. Yes, face-to-face -face and in your social bubble, but also online, in social media. It extends to things like the blogs that you watch or read, the books you read, and so on, right? Pay attention to who you're allowing to influence you and, and to whether they're actually helping you be the person you want to be, accomplish the life you want to live, or are they dragging you down? What I suggest is actually intentionally focusing your attention 
your energy, your connection towards people who elevate you, who help you feel lifted up, who help you step outside your comfort zone and into your full potential, who inspire you to create, to take action, to accomplish the things that you want, have the impact in the world that you desire to have. And be conscious of who the anchors are in your world, who are people who bring you down, who create some boundaries around, um, you know, who, who rather who um, like swimming with anchors, who you come away from feeling demotivated. Because once you know who those people are, it actually gives us the choice of creating some boundaries around how we interact with them, how much time we put to that, right? And for me, well, <laughs> My action is the next time I'm on the edges of one of those conversations that undermines my happiness and my mindset, I'm simply going to walk away from it. Because I know the crucial role that the mind plays in life and it is definitely worth taking care of. So I hope this has served you. I hope it uh, gives you some ideas as to how you can boost your happiness and your well-being. I'd love to hear your comments. So uh, either leave a comment below if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, or uh, if you're watching, if you're listening to the podcast, feel free to pop by my Facebook page and leave your thoughts there. The link is in the description for the podcast. And look, I'd love to hear from you. If you found this content serves you and is helpful for you, do make sure that you um, subscribe and share with others who you feel may benefit. Have a fantastic day, and I will look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.